This week in league, Paul Gallen proposes deal with Netflix and the Warriors to produce docu-series The L Dance. Volandis proposes allowing players to Sparta kick each other after Cody Walker is cleared by police. Greg Ingles confirms his plans to become the world's first reverse Captain Cook. Plus, we power on for one more week without games in this 2020 NRL season. All that more this week in league. Welcome to episode 351 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Jay. How's, uh, how's lockdown, the Rona period, the Rona era, retreat, yeah. how's it treating you this week, sir? The restrictions are easing. They are. They are easing and uh, we have restaurants open for 10 people. Yep. I haven't been to one yet. Uh, I drove through... Redcliffe the other day. Yes. And it was packed. I went down to Redcliffe. Actually, I went down to, to, to Scarborough on Saturday morning. And um, then before and after, I actually went the long way and, and did a just a cruise down the main drag there out the front where the jetty is and, mm-hmm. and the lagoon and stuff just to sort of see what, what it was like. And it was actually like the people, you know, they seem to be keeping within the you know the limits but there was you know there were there was definitely signs of life there and then after we finished like you know probably around 11 o'clock in the morning or whatever after having some breakfast yeah went to another spin down there and just went down suttons and everything as in having some breakfast in a cafe or no no just actually just made some stuff and took it down Ah, because yeah i'm not i'm not ready to to get amongst the creeps and the motherfuckers just yet i'll tell you what there was a bigger concentration of people Mm. in redcliffe than there is in the city and there's obviously more space in the city. Yeah, the thing is, if you had seen Redcliffe like the week before, it was much worse. Oh, really? Yeah, because like they had the markets and stuff on the Sunday. Oh, and it was fucking, fucking like, hell. and it's just fucking retarded. It's just packed with fucking dumb cunts. What is fucking Philandis running Redcliffe City <sighs> Council? Trying to get everything back to the way it was in the nineties. It's fucking, it's fucking. It was fucking ridiculous. Jesus Christ! There were actually there were less people at Redcliffe on the weekend because on the Friday they made the radius. 150 kilometers that you yeah, could travel. Yeah, yeah. So, further, so yeah. Brisbane people who wanted to get out, get away from shit, Redcliffe wasn't the, the only destination yeah, that they had okay. available to them. Yep. They could go up to the sunny coast or down to the Gold Coast, and that yeah, was well gotcha. within the radius, you know. Yep. So, so it was actually better this weekend than it was the one yes. before. I mean, I only saw photos the weekend before, um, you know, from people in the groups and stuff just going like, "This fuck, these fucking idiots! Look how many people there are!" And, uh, but yeah. Nice. It's coming to an end. Well, not the lockdown. I mean, school. Well, school starts up next week, so that's interesting. That'd be interesting. One kid can't fucking wait. One kid's like, "Fuck no!" <laughs> school system's <laughs> holding him back in his life. I mean, <laughs> he's like, like killers like get to schoolwork, and he's like, you know, finished by twelve. Yeah, and so which means that he can you know jump on Animal Crossing or fucking Fortnite or whatever you know, yeah. like because yeah. he's he's literally done. All of his, all of his uh, drum practice, all the work that's been sent through, and he just yeah, fucking nice. cleans it out so quickly. And the other one takes longer to do the schoolwork, but she actually, you know, she wants to, you know, she really likes the social side, so she's excited that there's only two more days of uh, of homeschooling. And the other one would be homeschooled for his entire fucking life if he had the option. I, th- I think mine's looking forward to uh, having his school days without. Dramatic monologues. <laughs> I can hope he, he's doing, you know, writing his sentences. And yeah. Forgets his full stop. Yeah. Life ain't gonna hand you nothing. <laughs> it's gonna be take and take <laughs> and take. And unless you got your head screwed on straight, everything you own gonna be taken. <laughs> I want to whenever whenever killers like uh like shirking the drum practice, I like show you like get on YouTube and, and put scenes from Whiplash on. <laughs> what's that? It's a it's a movie with um what's the fucking guy? Oh the, the fucking guy that played like Schillinger in Oz and you know plays Jonah Jameson in in the new yeah, yeah. Movie. Commissioner yeah. Gordon yeah yeah in the proper movie uh, was he yeah and he um 
what's his fucking name? Commissioner I'm, Gordon. I've lost it. That's it. That's all. But you know who I mean. Yeah. And um, remember he yeah. got jacked for Commissioner Gordon. He plays. Yeah, that's right. He plays. He plays like a. Uh, uh, a jazz, like a jazz conductor who selects uh, uh, Miles Teller as like a young drum prodigy and to, to basically train him to be in his, his jazz ensemble. And he's just the most ruthless fucking perfectionist cunt. It's one of the most stressful movies I've ever seen because he just is the most intense fucking, you imagine this guy just barking at this. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way that somebody could sell that movie to me in a way that would make me want to watch it. Oh, it, well, it won't, it, it's Oscar. I was, I'm pretty sure it won uh, Academy Awards. Okay. It's fucking amazing. We all know that they just fucking hand those things mm. out. It's, the, it's one of the most stressful fucking movies. Yeah. I remember afterwards, we, like at the end of it, you're just like, holy, like bald, holy fuck. Bald, middle-aged, grumpy white man yells oh. at a kid to play well, yeah. drums yeah, in a young jazz adult, ensemble. not a kid. A young, a young adult, let's say. Like he's he, old enough He's old enough to take it if, if he wasn't such a fucking little bitch. How many of the shittiest things in life are there? Grumpy old bald men. Yeah, or Glenn, yeah. Jazz ensembles <laughs> and drums. Drums are fucking awesome. Drums aren't fucking awesome. They are fucking awesome. Bass, bass players are more popular than drummers. No one fucks the drummer. Well, as someone who's actually lived through the experience of being a guitar player, so I'm all good. Exactly. But, but I will, I will, I will say that bass players and drummers, f- very fucking level bass. <laughs> but I'll t- well, I mean, look, if I'm going to speak exactly from my experience, in my experience, the bass players get more fan mail from gays. That's a fact. <laughs> and um, the drummer and the, the drummers, because the, the drummers so bass actually- players fuck. Well, no, Good but see, the drummers are usually, you know, they're usually half naked when they're playing as well because, you know, it's it's actually fucking physical labour. And it's so they, off. they're sitting down. And so they, and so they get the uh, they they get the, the ladies who, yeah, you because know, they're showing their rig off. They're sitting down. Yeah, uh, like th- like drummers. It's like fucking cyclists. It's not exercise if you're sitting down. The problem is, uh, fuck off, Lance Armstrong. The problem is, you, the problem is, you're too like in the you know Metallica frame of mind where you're talking about that little pasty fucking Lars Ulrich. Oh fuck him! <laughs> what else? You know, drummers do nothing but fucking ruin things. Like Tommy Lee stretched out Pam Anderson, made her useless for guys like me. Yeah, but uh, but at the same time, gave her hepatitis. But, but at the same time, she had fucking every every fucking chlamydia variant that you could imagine. So did you really? Even if it fit like a glove, did you really want to fucking succumb to that? Well, you know, I'd be okay. Do it for the story. I mean, I'd, I mean, look, look. <laughs> yeah, he's coming from the man that's headed for yeah. Rebel Wilson right, for I'd, the story. Yeah, okay, I'd fucking yeah, I'd, I'd I'd piss out fucking hot lava for the story. For the Pamela Anderson story, <laughs> I would get hepatitis with that, like with so many that they had to invent a new one, like with that letter that looks like an A and an E stuck together. <laughs> it's like you have hepatitis that. <laughs> Yeah, they work their way through the entire the entire alphabet, and uh, then they just start working. Then you're, then you're starting like you're halfway down the Greek alphabet or something. But, um, um, you you unfortunately have hepatitis pie, <laughs> and that's because it will be forever recurring. <laughs> um, I forget. Welcome, what we're new listeners. About. Yeah. <laughs> This is a rugby league show. I fucking promise yeah. you. Well, you know, it's rugby league ish. <laughs> <laughs> it's rugby league esque. Well, fucking nothing about rugby league. Rugby well, league this, at the moment. Well, this is the thing. We can we can talk about whatever fuck we want because uh, the rugby league ain't providing. Correct. It's providing bad news stories or just you know just fucking general fucking it's really, aggravation. It's really not. It's it's providing mundane things that fuckhead journalists are turning mm. into clickbait. <sighs> Now, just a bit of housekeeping to get fucking last week in the rear view mirror. mirror. Three fifty, no, three fifty. The the one of the things we spoke about there was it was coming up to like the D Day, the crunch time for fucking Brycey. Uh, you know, there'd been a show a show cause, or you know, get the jab or else by you know, or, or it'll register your intention to get the jab by Thursday or else. Yep. To to Brycey and Brian Kelly. By the time we'd recorded, we were recording on as we were recording on the Wednesday night. Brian Kelly had already um, he took it succumb to their wishes and uh and uh, uh whether he'd got it or not he'd certainly you know, indicated his intention to get it um brycey leaves it to the 11th fucking hour shapes up like he's gonna have a fight and then finds a doctor 
Yeah. To miraculously reveal at the death that, oh, he'd had an adverse reaction once, so therefore he doesn't should get an exemption get this time. So now he doesn't have to back down from his anti-vax bullshit. Yeah. They can't enforce the, the flu shot on him or punish him for not getting it. And you've got- It's just absolute piss week from Ooh. the Titans. No, they can. They can do something. Uh, they well, can which enforce, they, got, yeah. they can enforce Mal's uh, new culture regime. Yeah, and and uh, just drop it, just yeah, fucking well, drop it. Well, say it's for form. I don't. I, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen, and they are going to say it's for form, though. I think exactly. Good but on. you know what? He said the he said the lack of the injection was due to a thing. I mean, everyone's telling fucking Porky's here, so yeah, to get what they want. Exactly. So if the Titans don't want the fucking yep the Bryce Cartwright you know freeway through the middle of the, you the know field, what? can you imagine? I would get so fucking hard if this happened. Mal comes out and he says, we are dropping Bryce Cartwright purely for form issues and in no way is this an act of retaliation because he and his fucking crab-eyed bitch wife are <laughs> dumb fucks. Can I say I just love the way you've adopted the crab-eyed thing? <laughs> <laughs> this statement yeah. is equally as true as his yeah, statement yeah, that would be of like, an adverse reaction. That would be amazing because then- then everyone knows, but Bryce no can't, can't say a goddamn shit. thing about yeah. it. He can't say th- he can't say shit. That's it. Without, of course, you know. Oh, Mal, cucking himself. Get me there, Mal. Problem, Fuck. The, the problem is, Mal is is not the guy that is going to give us what we want. Never has been. Oh. Never will be. I don't know. Yeah, I've had two interactions with Mal. One of them was the stories I was told about how terrible he was at cheating at euchre mm-hmm. when he was playing. Like, just, like, have you played Euchre? I've not played Euchre. That's a card game. I understand it's a card game, and I don't know the rules, but- And you have a partner that sits across the table from you. Okay. And they don't know what cards you have. So, like this you- is someone who's actually playing collaboratively to win with you. That's it. So, there's okay. two teams yep. of two okay. players. Right. Um, and he'd, like, just do the worst fucking shit to try and- Because you can- Trying to communicate the, yeah. the, the cards Gee. you're holding. Well, you know, I went to the hardware shop because I needed a new spade. Sure. <laughs> like just, you know. yes. The only, the only male, and, and listeners of the show would have heard this, or maybe old listeners of the show would have heard this. The only male story I have is not it's not direct. It's a third, it's a, um, a third hand one um, or second hand one from Mrs. When uh, he used to live over near where she, where she was, you know, where she grew up. And uh, this is back sort of in his playing days. And, um, or post playing, it'd be Brisbane playing days, and they and the kids would walk home from school and they'd be walked straight past his house. Yep. And then it just so happened that one day he was out there on the front lawn and these little school kids walk past and they go, and they're like, they see him and they're like, holy fuck, that, yeah, that's like, that's fucking superstar rugby league player. Mal Meninga. Hero, Mal yeah. Meninga. They go, hi, Mal. And he goes, it is Malcolm or Mr. Meninga. And he turns around and walks back inside. <laughs> you fucking sour you cunt. And, like, and then, which he proceeded to give that exact same reaction when he was on the radio following his three minute political yeah, career. Yeah, announcement yeah. of his political career. <laughs> and uh, maybe one of the pl- maybe one of the Canberra players called him Mal in the fucking change room when he kicked yes, the Esky. That's it. Who knows? <laughs> I like your new Esky, Mal. <laughs> <laughs> it's Malcolm or Mr. Meninga. Fuck this Esky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, so Bryce has made a fucking mockery of it. It's just fucking. It's just shit house from all involved. The Titans can. The Titans still have, you know, the ball is in their court, and they still have the ability to just drop him. And it's just. But the thing is, they could have done it. What happened right up with front? The Canberra players. Did they sign the waiver? Well, or did the, they get the Cam- their jab? They, they, there was a reworded waiver that they signed, and as far as I know, they haven't had the jab and. Because of the wording of the the waiver, they didn't have to have the jab, and it wasn't made a big issue because they weren't based in Queensland, where the government had said well, no jab, no it. play. Okay. Yeah, you know what surprises me? Like we read that thing that Papali's misses. Yes. How can she be that fucking organised in day to day life? Oh yeah, the golf, the, the uh, yet yeah. still be such a dumb fuck anti vaxxer Well, was is he? No, no, no. I was no, oh yeah, that's right. It was Papali's, wasn't it? Fuck yeah. True. Well, yeah, I don't know. I think mm. that I think that theirs wasn't. I think it's not like this, this anti-vaxxer, like those people thing. It was more of a like a happy clapper Hillsong 
Jesus yeah, based yeah, yeah, injection. Okay. You know what I mean? Not like in a not like a vaccines give you. But I mean, like they're all kind of related. It's just weird how these fucking Venn I, diagrams of people are intersecting. I didn't know because that there thing. was a religious objection to vaccine. No, neither did I. But you know, they claim I'm, anything. I'm st- I, again. I'm still not sure. It- it is. I think it might just be the the fact that they don't want it or they heard about what happened in Samoa where those two kids died yeah, yeah. because of the out, yeah. out of date. Um, the anesthetics. Anesthetics, anesthetics yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. So anyway, fuck him. Fuck I got her. mine on Thursday last week. Nice. And let me tell you, it's fucking nothing to get it done. But I still, the cunt's still itchy though. Like the on, on my arm, it's still, yeah. it's, it's, I did oh, have- Oh no, did, dude. I did a bit of That's, reaction to it. Yeah. That's just some topical autism. Ah. Uh, yeah. Bit well, of, a bit of purple. Well, it's funny that you mentioned because I actually done. I actually did get onto PokerStars <laughs> and found found it very easy to win large sums of money. Not in funny. Cards. <laughs> Blackjack stars. <laughs> But, uh, and um, and I became an excellent driver, <laughs> and had this overwhelming urge to go to that I had to go to Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, where are we? Referees. Okay, so the one referee. This was last week. The well, probably I think it was right before we recorded. Right, mm. that the, they said the that Vlandis said you know we're dropping back to you know we're official. We're dropping back to one referee. Um, since then, over the last week, we've had you know. Con- Constant blow ups now with mm-hmm. uh, with the the referees rightfully, you know, <laughs> for having an objection to this, and then producing like their EBA where you know the wording in there was like you know any any um, you know major changes to the the way things are run need you know needs to be you know consulted and blah blah blah. Yep. And now we're currently in this in the position where I think they've had a meeting today and it didn't come to anything. I think that so the next step is like you know an arbitration sort of situation and there's talk that there could be a referee strike although the referees union have said, you know, the first games are on May 28 and we know, you know, they're not stopping because of us, but certainly with the media yeah. and uh, and uh do you like do you see the way this is uh Love a good fucking outrage. This is this is where this is this is the well, this is this is the part where we're drawing up the play, and uh, it's going out to it's going out to Steve Kerr. <laughs> Take the shot on fucking <laughs> on that cunt fucking Hooper, <laughs> giving priceless articles. the The fact is that here is this dumb, bald headed cunt who's sitting down. And writing articles again in complete contrast to to the emotion of of the majority of anyone I've seen spoken to heard from read in that there is a referee mm-hmm. that will sink the NRL somehow he's taking this from the point of view of well, he's the one. The one that the one that he was uh, he was uh, targeting was the the chair, right? Was it the ch- was it the chair of the PRLMO, who happens to own like a la- like a like laser a- hair removal clinic or you know whatever. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah laser like a beautician thing. That they, yeah, that's it. Um, Bit of landing strip fucking maintenance. Yeah, that's it. And pff, fucking you go. Barely legals are us. <laughs> but it it was almost in this mocking way of oh he gives like Brazilians and oh, Brazilians is about <laughs> vaginas. <laughs> well, well, it, 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 the, the article was literally it, that that was the tone of it. But then he literally had a line in there. I read it this afternoon. He had, had a line in there like going oh you know it's <laughs> what a strange situation. I mean, it could only happen in rugby league. What, that a fucking person has a business? A business, yeah. That's it. In addition to their exi- fucking- And and if you look at one of the most popular um, you know, services available around the country, mm-hmm. it's beauty. Mm-hmm. You know, like the most populous business on the face of the planet is hairdressers and beauticians. Mm-hmm. Fucking shock horror. Someone owns one. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my God. Only in rugby league. Only in rugby league. Only in rugby league. Only in rugby league. Yeah. 
<laughs> and this fuckhead's got form on this this week as well. I heard him speaking about, and this was in regards to who gets to play at which ground. Yep. And he's talking about the, there are some teams that have to travel further than others. And he referred to them, and this is a quote, as they're like your red-headed stepsister that can't get a date on Tinder. I Let- don't understand the analogy. <laughs> well, just just trying to say that it's it's like no one cares about them or that they're unwanted or uh, undesirable. Yeah. So- uh, okay. Okay. You, Give you, you, he's preaching to the wrong fucking. He's preaching to the wrong fucking audience here. Yeah. Um, if you haven't got, if you haven't got red hair, I'm not fucking interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that girl in Mad Men did a number on you. Um, God fucking damn! She isn't she the archetype though. Yeah. Red hair. Yeah. Not freckles because she stayed out of the sun for an entire fucking like yeah. five minutes of sunlight maximum per per, mm-hmm. per year. But just the fact that there had been people who I'm sure were passionate about analysing the game, about speaking about the nuances within a season mm-hmm. and and how different matchups affected outcomes and, you know, actually deep dive into topics that, that really should interest people. And Fox has had all these redundancies and gotten rid of all these journalists. And, yeah. And they've kept dipshits like Hooper. Yeah. Who keep coming out. With absolute drivel. And you're right. It really is at the expense of people who actually write quality articles. Yeah. And yeah, look, I mean, there's nothing happening on the field at the moment. So, of course, that, that reduces the the scope of things to write about. Mm. But you know what? I'm seeing a lot of places, like, you know, like bloggers and things like that seem to find plenty to fucking write yeah. about. That's it. In the off season. But of course, the blogs- aren't financially engineered towards reducing the value of the game of rugby league yeah, for, exactly. for fucking rights negotiation exactly. purposes. And but, the- this, but this referee situation, I mean, like, let's... In terms of that, Volandis is trying to spin it by saying that, like, you know, we, we've we've uh, we, we've done nothing wrong. All the, all the full-time referees, 21 full-time referees will be kept. But that wasn't initially what that's 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 a that's a, a concession he's made in what, the meantime. What he said was no referee will lose their job. I think that's how he put it. Well, no, what, what I said then was his exact was a, a quote. Oh, you yeah, know, but originally yeah, yeah. he yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Look, I, just to break this one out, in dealing with the issue itself, I'm not entirely opposed to the one referee distinction. Not because I'm married to the idea of how things used to be, or because I think that two referees is a bad idea. It's- yeah, because there, there are a couple of different there are a couple of different angles here. One, like you said, is mm. yeah, it's the actual the rule change yep. to drop back to one referee, that's it. and whether that's a good or a bad or otherwise. And thing. that I'm yep. I'm ambivalent on, yep. simply because again, this is a fucked up year. Mm-hmm. It's one year. It's going to be out of ordinary. If you're going to try something, great. Yeah, I and I look. I fully expect it to remain the case. The I thing think. that worries me is there are so many instances in history, and we spoke about one very, very recently in the handling of the uh, Latrell and Fox situation. Yep, where they were busted, and the NRL handed out a penalty. Yep, all that that needed to work flawlessly was communication mm-hmm. between the head office and the clubs and the players to yep. get someone from head office and someone from the club, preferably the coach and the players involved, get them all on a fucking conference call and say, this is how we're going to present this. Are you happy with that? We have to give you something mm-hmm. because you've breached it and now there's charges coming, so we have to give you something. Are you happy with this wording that we support your uh, fight against you know mental illness in the Indigenous community and this, 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 this? Are you happy with that? how we're going to position this? If you're happy with that, we're going to need you to apologise and be sincere about it. Yeah. Like, that that was fucking simple. This is another situation where it absolutely reeks of a lack of communication. And, it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a – and it's a lack of – I mean, you know, I don't think they have – I think they have reasons, but I think that the reasons aren't the ones that people are going to want to hear. 
So they have to come up with a bunch of other shit. Exactly. So the first thing is they are, we're going to drop back to one referee. Why? Because an online poll in the Daily Telegraph no. in 2019 yeah. had had the second highest resp- the response yep. was for that option. So based yep. on that, it's what the people want, the rugby Ooh. league people. So that's what we're going to do. But then next thing you know, it's not because of that. It's because they want to get the wrestle out of the game. Which is things, fu- which is that's why the second referee removing was the in. removing the second referee's absolute fucking antithesis of trying to get the wrestler out of the game, yeah. and then they come and go. Oh no, it's the game's been bloated far too long. Yeah, we need to do it to save money. It, so what? The, what fucking is it? The, what? What is it to start with? Yeah, and then to to run this thing like oh you know the referees the referees are the cunts. They immediately they they took the same pay rise as the play, the pay, same pay yep. cut as the players. Yep. Offered to take more if it were to, you know, help the the game. Yep. And and to, and after all that, it only saves about three hundred grand a year anyway. Yeah. So it's not exactly an area of bloatage. I mean, for fuck's sake, the officials that that impose the rules of the game to ensure that the games are played to a fucking consistent and and fair standard. I mean, that's a pretty fucking integral part of the game at a pretty low fucking price, comparatively speaking. Yeah. It- Again, it's it's just poorly thought out, mm-hmm. poorly communicated, and firing off with almost this almost this arrogant sense of autonomy that, well, we'll just do this. Yep. And because we run the game- And because we've been starved for like fucking two months- and All just, facets of the game will just yeah. fall into line. And these, yeah, and, and they and the people who mm. watch the game, mm. it's either this or they get fucking nothing. Yeah. So, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> They'll like it or, you know what, doesn't mm. matter. Mm. They'll take it. Mm-hmm. And yep. it's almost mm. as if- I wish they would realise- that people are going to whinge about referees no matter what. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens, if their team loses, if there's obvious things to blame in the team, they'll blame those. Yep. And they'll always tack in there just on the, oh, but the referee didn't help either. But yeah. that's the best case scenario. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They The union, I mean, uh, brings up a very good point in saying that, that they, they've, they often preached about the superiority of the two-referee system. Yeah. And in fact, in speaking about like the grand final, mm. <laughs> most recent grand final, mm. um, you know, what happens there? Like, you know, imagine that. I think someone sent through the mailbag, so I hope I, I, I answered that question early. But yeah, what happens there with the the, the six again? I mean, that that was, the, that was the one referee that started and then aborted the call. So hang on. Memory. It was the pocket ref that said last- and then the main ref said six again? Or was it the main ref that said last and the pocket ref said six again, so the main ref called That's six again? That's what I think. Yeah, I think, the, I think the second thing. Well, Canberra win the grand final. Yeah. Potentially. I mean, there was still time, but I mean, yeah. That, the, that doesn't happen the way that happened. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I'm hopeful for here, and again, trying to light a fucking candle here, mm-hmm. is that maybe what's been missed in all of this is I have read a couple of places that they have said the bunker will be allowed to provide live information to the ref. Yeah. And that That's makes, something that that makes me hopeful. That's something that we've been about for a couple of years. Exactly. Yeah. That, that makes me hopeful that you've got the ref, the fucker's mic'd up, and the bunker are up there saying, hey, you need to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, like anything, we can only wait and see. Yeah, and so like there isn't there. But on the actually, basis of, of the refs actually being cunted out of their jobs, that's not fucking cool. Yeah, and they haven't actually threatened strike action, as far as I can tell. It all seems to be just stuff that's been proposed. You know, that could be an outcome by yeah. the people who have who have a vested interest in talking the game. It's this down. fucking trend with these dickhead journo's again. Mm. And then, you know, there's a fucking trend here too. Yeah. Speaking about them, yeah. But somebody within the body or someone they spoke to would make a comment such as, we will obviously look at all options available to us. Yeah. 
and then they say those options could include strike action because it yeah. is available. It's yeah, available anywhere exactly. that you're organised labour. And look, look, uh, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no, no communist. I mean, <laughs> hmm. like, but I, I, strikes are inconvenient. But the thing is, to go from we will explore all options available to us yeah. to a journalist then just taking that leap to say those options include strike action. Yeah, to say they're going to then strike. Then that don't becomes get the narrative that oh my god, they're going to strike. Yeah. Yeah. And look, at the end of the day, if the referees were to strike, I know they were talking about all oh, they can just take, you know, the set, you know, the, the next level down referees, but then they've all signed on to the union too in the last couple of days as well. So that, that removes them, Queensland and New South Wales. So that removes that. So then you got the, the then I saw a tweet from fucking um Oh, who's that cock? I can't Luke Phillips. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> like, the retired sort of, try, refs. Try, yeah, trying to trying to rustle up support, like you know, for a little for a little fucking scab referee army. And look, at the end of the day, if you are, if you like, I I I want footy back. Obviously, I've got fucking new, yeah, massive vest. I mean, we 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 do a podcast based around rugby league. We want fucking rugby league to come back. Yeah, I mean, people want stuff to do on the weekends. They want to watch games. They fucking love their teams. I get it. Believe me, I get it. We wouldn't be fucking sitting here every week for fucking a decade doing a podcast if if we didn't fucking get it. But at the same time, if you're prepared to just fucking throw the referees under the bus just because it might inconvenience your fucking return to rugby league. Yeah. You, yeah. And, and, you, and you're prepared to fucking just swallow... Whatever fucking whatever Cox fucking Vlandis is trying to shove down nine and Fox yeah. are trying to shove down your throat, mm. then you deserve the bukkake you get. You mm. deserve to wake up sticky motherfuckers. Mm. Mm. Deserve to wake up looking like Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. I, I'm not sure people knew this is what they were signing up for because if you get rid of you know bloated head office, yeah then you end up with this. You end up with someone at the top that's just going to say stuff. And just making, like, autonomous decisions. Yeah. And they, yeah, just, just trick on through down. Yeah. yeah. It's not a good fucking system. Yeah. Inglis. Greg Inglis coming out of retirement, which is great news. Um, and he's going to be playing with uh, Warrington, who, let's face it, they don't really fucking need a Greg Inglis at the moment as well because they're traveling. They're, they're going all right over mm. there. <laughs> but... Um, but having GI over there next year, I mean, because obviously things are it's going to be a while for him to get over there. I think they were talking about going over in December. But uh, he's been granted a UK work permit, and uh, the signing, as far as I know, has been officially announced on both sides now. And uh, he's d- agreed to join them for the 2021 season. So uh, apparently, Inglis was uh, a couple of months ago, he was sort of uh, toying with the idea of, of just, you know, returning and playing games for Maxville. In uh, Group Two up in Northern New South Wales, yes. Um, Russell Crowe tried to then persuade him to play with another Group Two side that's uh, you know closer to Nana Glen, the or- the Arara Valley uh, Axemen, and uh, they've had uh, well, they've had financial problems and participation issues. But Russell Crowe obviously has the money to fix the financial problems, and GI playing in the side would probably go a long way towards fixing the participation problems. Correct, because everyone wants to go and fucking. Run off GI or fucking throw the throw the pass to GI. Yes. Um. But uh, Richo, formerly of Souths, uh, when when he got wind of these deals, he sort of said, "Well, you know, you can do better than that." Yep. And he's happened just to start his own sports agency with his son, and uh, with Greg Inglis as one of their <laughs> first clients, and uh, negotiated this deal and uh, to go over to uh, to Warrington. So, first thing, I think it's fucking great, and I think we got a great we got a great chance of seeing like a slight more resurrection of the peak GI over there in England against those bitches. Yeah, than we do than we do in the NRL. So it's fucking great. I think it's going to be. Easy. I mean, the the wind, you know, the, the cold weather's not going to be great, but I mean, it's going to be easier. Well, it's a fucking encouragement to move. Yeah, ah, it's also an encouragement for pies. Yeah. But British pies have fucking peas and shit on them. Yeah. So I think we will see fit, Greg. Thing is, it doesn't have to be 100% <laughs> to dominate England. <laughs> and, um, you know, and he's, step- he's stepping into a good side. And look, I just think it's great, especially with the time away that he's had. So he's had, you know, up to today, he's had, you know, just over a year off playing. Yep. And uh, I think, you know, if he's managed to get a handle on all these injuries and everything, 
it'd be it's it's amazing what a year off fucking the day to day grind yeah. of contact sport will yeah. do. So if he's anything, you know, like back to back to good shape. Yep. Then I think you'll do. I think you'll do great over there. It'll be great to see him fucking truck and poms over there, as we said at the start at the start of the show, and um, and yeah, I think it's a great thing. The only thing I, what I do want to mention is, once again, like the fucking referee narrative online. There's been this fucking narrative bob up that, oh, uh, uh, like, look, I talk about kicking Souths out every time, and it should happen. It should happen. I fucking believe in it wholeheartedly. I'm always talking about kicking Souths back out. Always. Mm. So so understand who's saying this when you hear this. But this fucking stupid narrative that GI was medically retired and South's got some kind of fucking backdoor favours to save a bunch of money with which they could then sign Latrell Mitchell. Yeah. It's just fucking retarded. Grow yeah. up, you dumb cunts, and fucking read. Just it only takes a fuck it takes Three seconds to fucking Google why did GI retire, yep. and in his in his fucking press conference when he announced his retirement, he was saying that like yeah I've, str- I've struggled with injuries but have come back you know come back from injuries pr- always come back pretty well yep. but you know just not in it you know and if I can't give a hundred percent then you know I shouldn't be you know the captain you know to, you know I can't I can't be the leader I want to be so I'm going to pull the pin so it wasn't like some fucking medical retirement it wasn't because of injuries he decided that he wasn't up to the performing at his best and if he couldn't do that he didn't want to continue so he actually just retired and had the and south had this the financial benefits and he had the financial benefits of a guy that just fucking walks away from the game yeah he didn't get any settlements they and didn't have to pay they didn't have to pay and it was any 100 percent legit they didn't have to have any any money on their cap except up until may that year when he retired because you know he'd been yeah. he'd been an active player up to that point, just like any other thing. So trying to conflate it with a fucking dodgy. And I'm, I've seen the fucking Pasco Brigade out there asking about why why it's different to Robbie. Yeah. And that's even fucking simpler. It's because it the job he got post footy was not part of the negotiations of that contract. Yeah. You and can. he had to would he would have had to work at that job for fifteen years to make the fucking yeah. set amount of money that he was due on the contract. And to their credit, South cleared him being employed with the NRL, the NRL before they set everything out. They said, "Okay, here's the plan. This is what he gets this year. This is what's left on his deal, and he'll work here for however long at this much per year. Are you happy with that?" And they went, "Yep." It really is a fucking nothing to see here situation. Exactly. It's very rare for a player to retire and then come back. Don't get me wrong. I mean, mm. like I think it was like the the last time it it happened was like I think fucking like John Scandalis and you know he came back for two thousand. Think he came oh. back for two thousand and five. So he had a great you know campaign when he came back. Yeah. But it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen often. Like a guy actually retires. And then, comes, and then comes back. Comes back, comes back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, the Jamie Lyon ran off. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't retire. I mean, like he 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 was for, he kept fit from you know shooting shooting pigs up in Wee War, <laughs> and then he went over and fucked up England like like GI is going to do and go and fucking dominate, be the best yeah, player. He just did it the other way around, like Blake Austin did last year. Yep. And um, um. <laughs> and so he's yeah, so he goes over there to reunite with Gareth Gareth Widdop, who he played with um you know back when uh, in the Storm days. Yep. And, uh, I mean, they were already a fucking great side. They won the Challenge Cup last year. Mm-hmm. So, wow, what a luxury to be able to slot Greg fucking Inglis into your side when you're defending and that. It, at the end of the day, the Super League's doing what it is. It, it provides a home for fucking busted past their prime Aussies to go over there and relive their heyday. Yeah. Thank you, Super League. And all the people that are talking about, you know, South back backroom deals and everything like that that live in Queensland, I'm sure they're going to be absolutely sucking Greg's dick saying, please do like an Alfie Langer thing yeah, and fly over and fucking save oh, us. Mate, there's fucking already- Fucking save us from three in a row in Origin. already <laughs> articles. Kevin Walters- Well, it'll be four in a row by that point, I suppose, but mate, yeah. Kevin Walters has come out- Oh, has he? And said that there is always a spot for- like great Queenslanders or exceptional <laughs> Queenslanders. <laughs> he is fucked. Done, done, done. Yes. As they say in uh, Queensland fucking 
dickhead speak. Yes, that's a, that's a, that's a, has superseded the old uh, the old Billy Moore fucking Queenslander <laughs> crawl. Now it's a dun dun dun. <laughs> Fifteen thousand dollars, please. <laughs> or was it fifty? I can't remember. Whatever it was, it was fucking not worth it. That fucking stupid brain genius whisper. What was his name? <laughs> oh, Coach Whisperer. Know. That's. <laughs> I, don't know. I thought you were pretending to be the guy that gave Bryce the contract. <laughs> no, I was just trying. I was trying that brain genius fucking yeah. Bradley. What's his name? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the brain genius whisperer. Um, last thing I've got on here is the Cody Walker thing, which is uh, yes. Yet to play out fully, but in terms of, uh, as far as Cody's concerned, uh, they, they haven't released anything yet as far as, uh, like, club or or game punishment, have they? No, most recent thing has been that he's been cleared by police. Police, police have cleared him, so, so and kids, when you're out on it, Sparta kicks, perfectly legal. Only to break up fights that haven't happened yet. Yeah. That was a preemptive- So, basically- you, you you're on this like fucking Spartan minority report thing where if you see someone you don't like the look of and you don't want to fight to break out you just fucking just go and Sparta kick them. <laughs> it, it's the good old the good old South Park one. Of, He's coming right for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> um. So, but the intriguing part of it is is, is this. This blackmail web. For starters, the twenty thousand dollar video. Come on, son. If you're going to blackmail someone, I don't think it. it the sum total of aggravation that it's caused to his life is not worth twenty thousand yeah. dollars at the moment. Um, and then it's like you know his agent got a demand for the twenty thousand dollars, and then they traced the number where the demand came from, and it and it matched a, another agent, which is now being investigated. Yeah, That's it, the story I want to know. I don't give a fuck about the Sparta kick. It was nothing. It was a nothing incident. The, yeah. I, I know It wasn't that- even worth someone standing in the back saying, screaming out, world star. That's how fucking lame it was. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. You know, very often I, so I, I see behavior in other people and I sit down and I think to myself, Am I possibly the smartest person on the face of the earth? <laughs> or or at least just am I the least stupid person? Yeah. Or within the top 10, yeah. you know? Let, let's not even be so uh, presumptuous. Yep. Yeah. Top 100 yeah. globally. And I think surely not. Surely these stupid people are in the minority and it's just that I'm seeing it and so that's that's my bias that, that I think it now must be everywhere. But this agent, allegedly, has tried to blackmail somebody, allegedly, from their own phone in yeah. their name, mm-hmm. allegedly. And not- to the point where it's so easy to track that the that the media can report that that is in fact where it has matched. Yeah. Like they sell burner phones. There wasn't his, there was no level of obfuscation where he was like a, a burner that match that pinged the phone tower where a where a fucking other agent is. Yeah. There's like not even that level of like, you know, speculation to it. But th- yeah, I'm just <laughs> this agent couldn't couldn't even fucking work out I'm gonna pay five ninety five for a VPN and I'm gonna create an email account that is you don't know who I am at gmail dot com. Yep. Yeah. I'm not a player agent at hotmail dot com. And send the the threat via email, not text. Yeah. Really? Or kick it old school, chop up a fucking new idea, (laughs) paste the letters in, and then stick it in a fucking little red box. Yeah. That's like mold. That's out in the middle of nowhere, where there's no shops or fucking ring cameras or you know whatever. Like and yeah, go to fucking casino and do it from there. Exactly. It it just beggars fucking belief. And yeah. look, do it that way. Do it out of that That's Life magazine. Bonus. Get some crosswords. Up your fucking brain's processing power, you dumb fuck. Might be able to need some scratches or something. I don't know. What are they giving away these days? I don't know. Man, those things. Old people love those things. Well, it's like it's like a it's like a paper form of pokies, isn't it? Yeah, true. <laughs> oh, good shit. But uh, yeah, so nothing to see there. Have you got any other stories you want to talk about this week? I, I nope. sort of scanned through, and they were probably the main ones. 
So, uh, no, no, unless you want to talk about hashtag Yuri of Cleary's spectacular fashion sense. Ugh, really? His cardigan. Yeah, knee length cardigans. I saw them on sale in the, in, I got an email about them, um, through the week. Yeah. From the women's section of Uniqlo. Now it's pronounced Uniqlo. I don't think that's the point that should be taken away from this. You just said Uniqlo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, what, you think you're the only one that gets the emails? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a fucking black nail technician's name. <laughs> <laughs> the point is... Where'd you get that? Hmm, Uniqlo. The point is, he's wearing fucking uh, cardigans. He's a fashion from the ladies, individual. From the... <sighs> It's not. It's from the men's section. It's not from the men's section. Yeah, it is. I defy you to find that in the men's section of fucking anywhere. I don't think he's buying. He didn't even find it in the men's unique low. I think he probably. I think he might fucking. He'd be buying from unique high, because that's these high standards, high fashion. Hashtag Yuri of Cleary. Not hashtag Yuri of Cleary though. That's the thing. And you try and and you try to pull that fucking slick move when fucking when Zuckerberg banned me for fucking banned me from Facebook <laughs> for twenty four hours for putting posting a picture of a of a, a chicken with a fucking blindfold and a ball gag in her mouth, like that's from you know like what's sexual about that? I mean that's life, baby. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking day to day life. Yeah. And uh, it's yeah, well, and I didn't get reported by any kind. Look, here we are from the website Culture Kings. Implying that they are the kings of culture. Uh, there you go. Oh, you've got a picture of him there. When did he get blonde hair, though? When did he get the? When did yeah, he dye himself the slim shady that's hair? That's it. Oh, I, I think we've actually found that exact. Yeah, there you go. I have to have a look, but um, that looks very much like it. Yes. Well so, done. So, well, you know, I'm convinced there's more than two genders. Hashtag Yuri. Well, <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> dear, oh dear. But uh, yeah, so yeah, tried to pull that slick move while I was fucking banned from Facebook. And uh, the only part you fucked up was, is that I told you I had 21 hours of fucking to serve. <laughs> but I actually only had about 18. Oh, so, no. <laughs> so, so, so you thought you you thought you were slick and set like a time limit that I couldn't possibly reach. <laughs> but um, alas, it's easy. You just, it turns out you can't post. You know, when you, this is the first time I've actually been had, had a cop to ban on Facebook. And I, co- I you, can't, one. you can't even fucking like, you can't even put reacts on it. You can't do a goddamn motherfucking thing. Yeah, wow. And when I've got several business accounts on there, you can't run your businesses too, I found. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, but you can't, you can't like throw a like on something. You can't share stuff. You can't do a damn thing. Yeah, Fucking wow. Zuck. And wow. uh, the only positive I took out of it all was it wasn't someone who was on my friends list reporting something because it literally happened the second, yeah. like it was one of these algorithm things. I, did, that- I copped one. For posting a picture of a wish ad on Facebook. Yeah, how did the wish ads get on for, Facebook in the first place? Like, for Because they pay money. And yeah, but I mean, like, I've paid money for advertising on Facebook as well. And, like, when you add it, when you attach an image yeah. to a, to an advertisement, the amount of fucking hoops you have to jump through to tailor that image to make sure it fits all these but you know what ridiculous mine, criteria. Mine was for a speculum that yeah. was available on wish.com. Yeah. Which is, like, A, it was on a wish ad. <laughs> And B, on, fa- on Facebook, it's, it's a genuine medical implement. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, no, I copped a twenty-four yeah. hour for that. So apparently, that's my second strike. So next time, I'm gone for a week. Oh no, three days next time. Oof. And uh, so now I'm fucking just treading very lightly, God damn. looking at things. Could that be construed as too sexy for Facebook? I don't know. They're so making no. they're making me fucking self censored. So no more uh, selfies then. Well, this is the thing. I mean, yeah. that's why I had to. Put my, that's why my profile picture. I'm wearing that fucking tiger mask that's from it. the grand final weekend. That's it. You just can't. You just can't be fucking too sure. Well, that surely is sexual. Well, maybe that was the stri- <laughs> that, that was strike one. <laughs> <laughs> strike one was for bullying, harassment. I found out. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, just it was in the tour group. I just said, <laughs> I, just, I just said, shut the fuck up, cunt to somebody. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't anything too bad. It was to Matthew McCarthy. I said, I just said, I said, I said, I said, shut, no, it was like, shut your fucking dirty whorish mouth, something like that. <laughs> Boom. 
That's a strike for fucking against their bullying harassment. Well, there you go. <sighs> fucking Facebook's becoming my, safe space. In my, oh, in, in my own, in my own fucking group too. I can't, yeah. I can't even call someone a fucking whore. What do you want? And tell them to Jesus shut the fuck Christ, up. Jesus Christ, Facebooks. <laughs> You're not going to get any Michael Jordans out there with if you, you know, can't tell your teammates to shut their whore mouths. Exactly. You want to raise everyone to your level. Yeah. And if they, and if they can't get to that level, you want them to fuck off. Exactly. Like little fucking cowards they are. Horace Grant, you fucking snitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fucking goggle wearing Takashi six nine motherfucker. <laughs> How the fuck is that guy not fucking I know. dead it, already? Yeah, and it, it it feels like he's actually like making his re-entry into fucking the zeitgeist and I, music I ha- and stuff again. I lost any respect I had for the hip hop game when this happened. Like, well, he doesn't represent the game. To yes, be fair. he fucking does. <sighs> yes, he fucking does. The streets don't love these fucking dudes with like plaited, multicolored fucking dreadlock shit. But this is the thing: and he was in a racketeering case. Yeah, he was in the streets. Yeah, well, he was in the he was in the real shit Un- until he got until he caught. snitched on everybody. Yeah, yeah. It- but he's also he's also the dumb motherfucker that basically. Laid out in meticulous detail through his lyrics, <laughs> everything he did, <laughs> which was then, which was then provided. Actually, he did such a meticulous job of it; it constituted evidence <laughs> <laughs> about actual material, <laughs> material fucking actions in murders and shit. <laughs> anyway, man, like- and if the defense are gonna prosecute this, then the prosecutor come back and call you a bitch. <laughs> Oh fucking hell! I tell you, it's um, yeah. I don't know how we, how we got on that, but yeah, fucking crazy. The world's gone mad. Yes. Okay, got to go straight to the mailbag this week because it was my birthday last weekend, and with restrictions somewhat lessening the day before, I had a lot of uh, social situations open up at the last moment so I actually could leave the fucking house. So, Yay. Um, yeah, I will get back into the games uh, this week with any luck and uh, maybe have to do two mega streams of four hours each just to fucking get through them all. Um, Mailbag this week, uh, Jason says, when will people learn to film fights in landscape mode? And that, of course, refers to the, the Cody Walker yes. Sparta kick. Yes. And that is one of my pet peeves too. Yeah. I, it's fine to watch on your mobile, but yeah. you can just get so much more context yeah. from a fucking landscape filmed yeah. fight. That's it. I mean, if you're just seeing, yeah. Although, anyway. it, I forget which podcast. Maybe we're I just boomers. On. I forgot which podcast I had it on, but that was one of the things that all of those right wing, uh, young, like young Republican or young right wing people in America would do when they recruited people, they were meant to go around colleges and antagonize people and their number one rule was turn your phone sideways. Okay. okay. That would that was the first thing they taught them. Like that was the like that they were the ones that universities now have um like uh feelings free zones or like whatever where you can't have any uh Oh, that's material that, about anything. That's that point of personal privilege. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, and so some person like set up, like put a poster there and stood next to it. Yep. Okay. And as people would come up and be triggered by the poster, they would try and have a conversation with them with the purpose of antagonizing that person. Yep. To get them to the point where they're freaking out, then start videoing them and say, look at this irrational fucking lefty. Yep. yep. That's it. And that was their first rule. So we're fucking stupid. You know, neo-Nazi dicks can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like and look, f- look, I get it. Like a fight breaks out. It's still very exciting. Yeah. But honestly, it takes, it's not like it's a time thing. Yeah. You can still, you can, you can still hit record and turn it over in, in the time you can say fucking world star. Guarantee you, you. Flip it over. Guarantee you, if we were all fucking gangsters, yeah. motherfuckers would be holding their guns sideways quicker than anyone could. Yeah, but they can't hold their fucking hands sideways yeah. when they're filming a fight. Exactly. Just exactly. pretend it's your gat. <laughs> Michael said, uh, which player in the last 15 years has had the most impactful 
career resurgence. 15 years, very specific, very specific time period. Who is a player? So I guess what we're saying is there's a player who either wasn't good or was good and then became not good. Okay, and then, so they've, the, then they've undergone a resurgence. So working backwards, Benji's an obvious candidate? Benji is like the obvious candidate. Yeah. Probably because he's like recency bias and yeah, because he's, only, he's just come back and it's been like, you know, he had like a good five years out of it. Of non-impactful play. Oh, who else? Would you call Strong. Jamie Lyon a resurgence because he left and came back? Yeah, but it was like he was a fucking- but he was he, never- He was a king at Parramatta. He, then he dominated fucking England, and then he came back and just kicked, picked up in the NRL yeah. where he came off as well, so- <sighs> Luke Lewis had a fucking oh, it's, yeah, I, resurgent I, I, end. I, I, would, uh, I, would, I would back that. Um, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Cooper Cronk never dipped. Yeah, no resurgence there because he never dipped. Um, you called Joey returning from injury a resurgence again. Doesn't was- doesn't qualify in the fifteen years though. Oh fuck! Fuck! He's, he's gone by then. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, I feel like it's almost like a question that's just tailored for us to to suck Benji off again one more time. <laughs> but I don't know. Oh look, it took some fucking lows to get him there. Oh yeah, and I mean it is a genuine um, resurgence because I mean he he was dipping at the Tigers before he cleared out to rugby, and then you know he wasn't any he wasn't great at the at the Dragons, and then so, so much so that he was unwanted. Yeah, yeah. Mm, um, I'd like to see James Roberts have a resurgence of sorts. Yeah, yeah, I and that's possible. We didn't really, we didn't really speak about that, but he's going to be back playing fairly quickly. Yeah, that's from the look it. of it. He's uh, he's done the rehab thing, and uh, yeah, I think he's going to be back on the field pretty pretty quickly. Mm. Um, was he was he just in rehab for booze, or was it other substances? Don't know. It'll all come out, I'm sure. Yeah. Fuck. I, I hope it was just booze. Yeah. Because if happy, it's, if I'm it's happy other to hear shit. it from him when he decides to speak about it. Yeah. Which I'm sure he will. Yeah. At some point. Um. Resurgence. I'm hoping to see a resurgence from Latrell. Yeah. Um, would you say Fergie Ferg, while still being a bowling ball piece of shit, has had a resurgence of sorts? Yeah. Grudgingly, I would concede that that is probably the case. Um, Does it count if they go over to England and start being beast modes? No. Because um, that's expected, again, yeah, with okay. the Super League. Being the fucking power comparison of a professional yeah. rugby league competition that it is. Yeah, Special Olympics of rugby league. So, I don't know why I'm hating on Super League so much. Fucking go Super League. Go yeah. the international game. Yeah. Um, but the most mm. impactful, though, I still think the ones that we were talking about, that we've mentioned so far, Benji would still be the most impactful. And, I mean, even though, like, the impact is kind of like, you know, taking Tigers from, like, ninth to ninth, I mean, well, if you're talking there, about, if there, you're talking are, about there impact, are the metrics. Luke Lewis's resurgence resulted in a premiership. Yeah, I mean, he was there. Oh, and played a fucking big role that year. Yeah, but you know, I feel like there were other other factors at play that year. Yeah, <laughs> like but, you know, yeah, that was that was like Barber, you know. Back to his best, maybe there's a career or something. There's, yeah, that's he's fucking done it several times. He did it in um, England as well, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of a forward, <sighs> probably tougher on the big boys. Adam that's Blair's good. first or last year at the Warriors, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know about Blair. It, he did need he did require a resurgence, like after because he was after fucking he left, terrible at the Tigers, yeah. Then he had the first year at Brisbane. Yep. And then last year, the Warriors were coming first for like half the season just based on their forwards. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, well. I vote Luke Lewis, but you can have Benji if you want. I'm going to say Benji, yeah. Uh, Lachlan said, uh, have you guys changed predictions at all? I'd like to hear a top eight and maybe a favorite and dark horsey. I don't think the predictions have really changed that much, and it's kind of hard to say like because- there are teams that you would you expect to see at the top and uh, and in the finals, and I don't think 
by and large, I think there's a number of teams that haven't changed at all. I think uh, Canberra will be will be good. Yes, and uh, they'll be very good. And you know, the addition of uh, of Rapina can't be a bad thing. Um, mm-hmm. I think um, Parramatta is still going to be good. They start the season well. They're still going to be good. Yep. Um, Storm are always going to be good. The Roosters lost the first game, but they'll be they'll be fine. Manly is still going to be good. I, I just think it's going to be closer. Mm. And not not so much with dark horses, but for example, last year you, you went into last year saying it's going to be the storm and the roosters, then daylight, mm-hmm. then everybody else, and that's pretty much the way it played out. You know, the storm were minor premiers yep. by a large margin. Yep, um, roosters were dominant. Yep, for most of the season, Canberra poked their nose in at the end. Yep, um, but I, I think it's come back. You know the. The storm have got that thing where they're another year older. Yeah, but um, but it doesn't really seem like it's affected them too much. Mm. They, you know, but before the break, this is the thing. It's going to be it's round one all over again yeah. because there's been another two month preseason in there where people couldn't train as a team. That's it. They've had like teams are going into the games with what three weeks under their yep. belt. Um, so three and a half weeks of training. So it's not a fucking lot. So I feel like the teams that have more discipline. Setups and things like that. Yeah, uh, that have structure. Yeah, I got and and like who have like player groups that can kind of hold each other, you know, accountable and yeah. things like that a little bit That's more. That's it. I think they're going to do well. I think that the one referee is going to it's going to benefit teams that were fucking that that thrived under the one referee system. Yep, and um and and teams that like to fucking wrestle. Yeah, and you know, there's, a, and I think that this six again thing, where it's you know like the, not an automatic six again, but the six again is the prevalent way that the referees will deal with ruck indiscretions. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to defend, that's going to suit teams that like to fucking tackle, and then hold the guy down to not concede a try. Yeah, see, I'll disagree with you there. I think that's going to suit teams that like to get out and run the football. Oh, it'll, prob- it'll probably suit them as well. But if you're not conceding two points, I mean, there were teams that would be happy to concede two points instead of the try. But, the- and- yeah. but those same teams are also, if you don't take the two point option, they're very happy to sit there and defend their line for another set. Yeah, but again, if rather you- than concede a But line- currently, break. if you don't take the two point option, mm-hmm. they still get thirty odd seconds to reset their defensive line. This takes that advantage away. Yeah, I'm holding out hope for this one. Yeah, but I mean, all you need to- all you need is the time. You're holding the guy down in the tackle long enough so you guys get back. Mm. So that's still that's still going to happen. Mm. Whether they give you a penalty yeah. or they add another six tackles onto yeah. the end of it, doesn't you know? You're still you're still getting your benefit yeah, yeah, yeah. from holding the guy. No, down. no, no yeah. So, um, so look, I don't I don't think things are going to really mm. be too much too different. Yeah. I mean, obviously a very uh, you know a, an abbreviated thing. So if any team does get out, you know, in a minor premiership race, uh, there's not going to be that gap of last year for the Storm because it's just not the number of games for them to accumulate mm-hmm. that much of a lead unless something fucking crazy happens and like. One team goes undefeated, and then everyone else is just yeah. you know, scrapping with each other. Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah, that's it. We will see. We will see. Dark horse. I don't know. Not at this stage. I think we've seen teams that are going to be all right. Um, yeah, it's year of clearly. There's no dark horses. Yeah, there's a yeah. I expect that to go as his team lose respect for his lack of leadership. Um, Lee, how many games will a Melbourne Storm lose on their way to another premiership? Melbourne Storm will not win the premiership this year. You can take that to the fucking bank. Yep. I will concede that that cunt side does have a little bit of gas left in the tank mm-hmm. to certainly, you know, be a viable top four side and final side. But your premiership window has fucking slammed shut. And hopefully, this is the last year we have to watch Captain Cuntox run around too. Yes. Timmy McIntyre. I just got my membership and trust us shirt. Outstanding. You're goddamn right. And we got universal love for all the feedback that I've seen and uh, the private messages I've been sent uh, and, uh, you know, Facebook Messenger messages from people in the group who who went for the Trust Us shirt. Turns out trusting us is a pretty fucking good thing to do. <laughs> Almost makes me think, wow, now we've got to, now we've got to come up with a, a, a Trust Us fucking design all the time, every I, year. I was thinking that on the way over here. <laughs> what's, what's next? Like, we've, we've shown people- that they should trust us. Yeah. How do we follow that up and take advantage of that trust? Uh, yeah, yeah. I hear mm. you. And I, the answer is I do not know yet. Mm. 
I've got one idea. But you know, inspiration strikes when I've, you least when you're not looking for it to strike. Uh, yeah, I've I've got I've got an idea that I'll float to you. But, okay, uh, good. Yeah. Okay, Ryan said since uh, the year of Cleary has been a coronavirus AIDS ridden failure. Is it now time for the century of DCE hashtag to assume its rightful place? And I say, yes. Yes, it is, Ryan. Tremendous. Oh, my God. That is- Century of DCE. That is- I love it. That the is century as forced, of DCE. That is as forced as Cucky Evans trying to relate to other human beings. The century, And it's, it's great because he's literally 100 times better than Cleary as a player. And so he gets 100 times more years- than Cleary. It's fucking Yeah, you, it's you get tremendous. no votes on what is good to say, unique low. I'm telling you, the century of DCE. Even if he even if he wore a fucking woman's cardigan that was as long as his neck <laughs> and, dragged, <laughs> and dragged along the ground behind him like some kind of fucking cape. <laughs> um, Jamie says, why is Jay so delusional? I let that sit there for a cut for a day or two, and then I'm like, "Well, fuck! If I'm going to say it in the show, I need to, I need specifics." So then I replied to him and said, "Do you have any specific delusions you want to address?" And he said, "Look, I'll be honest. I was drunk when I typed that, but you know, fucking you're clearing all that bullshit." <laughs> so yeah, um, so why are you so delusional? So for me, the obvious. I mean, like. Rather than throwing you under the bus and and you know and saying that you're you know you're unintelligent or you know you what? Know, something like that, I I feel you had a stroke. That's I did totally, have a stroke. You, That's the short you answer. A bra- you suffered a brain injury. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone who calls him delusional, it's actually a fucking hate crime. Yes. <laughs> That's it. And you will be sued. (laughs) (laughs) It's illegal for you to disagree with my truth. Yes, that's right. (laughs) Chris said, uh, if the one ref rule, here we go, this is the one, if the one ref rule had been reinstated this time last year, do the Raiders Raiders win the grand final? Um, Jay says, yes. Yes, you do. 100% you do. And I want you to fucking dwell on that. I want you to sit there in your fucking incel basements- (laughs) <laughs> because if there's one thing that if, if I had my number one mental health tip, mm. it is to dwell on the bad shit that's happened to you and what ifs, <laughs> because it's just so fucking helpful. <laughs> and as you go over them, just really try and think about how the whole world is against you. And think of and how good it would have felt to win the grand final and how you don't get that feeling and you won't have that feeling. Then maybe- Maybe try putting some uh, alligator clips on your nipples as you think about all the ways that <laughs> rugby league has done you wrong. <laughs> I'd said this somewhere else in the, the chat to um, old mate Ian, the most vocal Raiders fan we have. Yes. That Canberra should be fucking lucky that it exists at all. Now that you can get all the pornography you want for free – on the device in your pocket, <laughs> plus any fireworks you could ever imagine, plus cool shit like lasers direct to your mailbox from Aribaba. <laughs> like, Canberra has no purpose for existing. Yeah. Like, just just be lucky we let you exist. Fair enough. Uh, Ryan, again, says, uh, what flavour of biscuit is Kieran Foran? Um... I don't know. What what was a biscuit that was fucking amazing and then f- it sucks today? Maybe it's like, like, do you ever have, when you were a little kid, you have a milk arrowroot with butter on it? Yeah. Well, probably margarine back then because our parents didn't know that it was fucking radioactive. <laughs> 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 that it was just chemical paste. <laughs> um. So are you, are, you, are you saying that the quality of the arrowroot or are you saying like as a kid it's the best thing ever but now you're like, mm. well, at, at a point in time- yeah. That was fantastic. Yep. Like, you see a plate of those coming yep. out. Yep. Oh. yep. And now, if somebody tried to give that to you, you'd look at them and question if they'd abandoned their children to be with a fucking yeah. tattooed big titty milf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what flavour of biscuit is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Were there any, like, limited... I mean, you know, Tim Tams are mad on the limited editions. Was there ever, like, a fucking <laughs> Queen of the Nile flavoured Tim Tam collab? <laughs> <laughs> Queen of the Nile X Tim Tam. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, um, Carsten said, uh, will Jay be censored on the show, except his DCE personation? Of course. Why? The only censorship that you've ever suffered on this show has been your own fucking doing. Correct. With microphone <laughs> mute buttons and whatnot. <laughs> Correct. So, no, no. I mean, at, the end, at the end of the day, no, it, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what anyone on this show says. I have not got the fucking time nor the inclination to sit here and edit anything. <laughs> As you can tell if you've ever listened to this damn show since episode about 15. Um, Matthew said, at what point do, uh, at what point next round do players celebrating tries as though there's a full stadium become unfunny? I say Lachlan Lewis round two. So do you mean, does that mean round four, like the second round coming back? Or does that mean that I Lachlan think he's Lewis saying it's already unfunny. It's already unfunny, yeah. yeah. I've got to be honest. I, I have got zero recollection yeah. of, play, of players. I thought that too. Like I mean, like yeah, you know, obviously players celebrating tries, and it's kind of like you know going in for the the hug with the teammate and stuff. That's crowd agnostic. That's like they still scored a try and they're still happy and I celebrating would, with the team members who put the I try would on. In fact, like to see a reverse piggy Riddell. I would like to see someone score a try and then everyone but them run into the Jump stands into stand and applaud. And applaud. And, yeah. Probably get busted then because they're no longer playing and they're breaching social distancing rules. Oh, but God. yeah, and they'd probably break the sex dolls or whatever that they <laughs> stuck in there to look like fans. Yes, you see that? What was that? Korean soccer or something? Yeah, outstanding. Go you, Korea. Um, Conan Conan asks, "What is best in my life? <laughs> <laughs> He'll never get old. Every, like we say yeah. every time. <laughs> Do you have any rule changes you'd actually like to see? I'd like to see the game clock stop between awarding the try and the kickoff." Yeah, I'm, happy. Could, I'm, I'm very happy. That. I'm happy with that as well. Mm-hmm. Honestly, the thing about the rule changes is, like, the game wasn't the it wasn't the least bit broken. Mm. I mean, you know, you get the, you, you get these waves of stuff that happen, like like the storm with the wrestling, and you know, th- and there are these new things that you need to, you know, n- rules that are broken in new ways that you need to close a loophole or do whatever to get rid of it. I get that. Yep. But uh, by and large. Even though the scrums are just a fucking fancy way of opening know, up the op- field, opening up the field and yep. starting it, starting a, an attacking set in a different way to a straight play the ball. Yep, and they aren't actually functional contests for the ball anymore. You know, except for one in fucking a thousand times yeah. when something miraculously happens. But um, I still they're still not like broken. I mean, it just feels like people who just think that the vision of the version of the game that they played as children or watched when they were first into the game like that's they've got this some kind of weird rose colored fucking time machine they're looking back at the looking back and 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 they're like that's when the game was the the way it should have been back whenever it imprinted on me or something and like yeah i don't i don't quite get it look it there was a, a bunch of things i heard on the radio um after uh, Arthur Proven passed away. Oh, we didn't touch on that either. Oh, true. That's sad as shit. Salutations. Veil. To the great man. Veil. Arthur. So great I named my son after him. Yes. I didn't. But you but didn't. No. You, did, you did. You did name him that. I named him that. But not after him. But yeah. not after him. Yeah. No. Um, of course, you're that- a big fan of the, the, the Dudley Moore movie. <laughs> <laughs> With a lovable fucking drunk. Yes, that's it. <laughs> um, it, the game did used to be more about running around people, whereas these days it seems to be more about running through people or over people. Yep. And and that was just something, and I hadn't thought of it that way. Um, but uh, looking at the rule changes we've had recently, uh, the corner posts, fantastic. Yep. Great. Yep. Taking them out of play or, you know, not making the ball dead. Fantastic. Yeah. However, d- d- but if they hadn't done that, we wouldn't be lamenting something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, not like you wouldn't know what it, you've lost. Yeah, yeah. I would tweak the uh, kicking the ball dead. Whereas in the automatic seven tackle thing, that's it. Whereas if it was deemed to be an attacking kick, so for example, if yep. you kicked it from within the twenty, and there were players chasing, mm-hmm. legitimately chasing through then it's deemed to be an attacking kick and it's just a normal restart on the 20. How do the players qualify to be chasing through? They've got to be like, how close to the ball they have to be? It's one of those things that's at the discretion of the referee yeah. actively chasing. Yeah. You know? So, with kick within the 20, and I think that brings the grubber 
back into play a lot more than it does now, especially late in the game. Yeah. Um, and and still, you know, takes out the the whole Billy Slater. Yeah. Um, theory. Apart from that, you know, again, it's it's not so much new rules or rules changed. It's I'd I'd really like to see a proper electronic referee being able to pipe down and the referees being okay to make mistakes yep. and for it to be culturally acceptable for referees to say, nah, we've had that decision overturned, mm-hmm. this is it, and yep. not feel like they fucked up personally and they're now bad people Yeah, yeah because they missed something at high speed. Yep. Oh, and Jeff Eunice to be hit by a bus. <laughs> Zoran said, uh, is it true that Channel 9 have been stalling the TV deal as they conduct a worldwide search for a camera lens wide enough to fit Joey's, Freddy's, and Gus's barge asses all at once on the screen while still observing the 1.5 meter rule? Possibly. I didn't think Freddy was that barge assed. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, oh, him, right. him, and, him and Joey, they, they rolled off the same fucking. Yeah. The, the, the same, the same, the same uh, assembly line that yeah. made the. Lower bodies of the action figures. <laughs> 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 uh, Gus, he's just an old fat cunt. Yes. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he was a... I mean, in his playing days... Never I mean, a thing, specimen. This, this is the thing. Fucking Prime Freddy and Prime Joey, barge asses. But, like, Gus was nothing of the sort when in his playing yeah. days. Um, Hamish said, uh, chin porn. Is it a real thing? Of oh, course it is. Look, if you had have asked me this question... It, two two years ago, <laughs> it's tip, it's typically politically correctly referred to as uh, um, hentai. But <laughs> look, if you'd asked me the question two years ago, I would have said, "Oh, don't be ridiculous." There's no such thing as chin porn. But in that time, maybe it was three years. I don't know. You know what I'm going to talk about next, don't you? <laughs> in that time, I saw a video <laughs> of a man. With sure, it was like a below average size penis, but it certainly wasn't a micro penis. But he was taking this penis and he was having sexual relations with a young lady's nipple. And I'm not talking about like beating it around or whacking it, I'm talking about penetrating her nipple at some depth with his penis. Mm. So, you ask me, does something as benign as chin porn exist? And I say, sir, of course it fucking exists. There are dark corners of this world <laughs> that that make I mean that make chin chin porn basically yes. fit for school curriculums. That's it. By comparison. Correct. Um uh, and Chris says, uh, how sickening is it watching NRL journos goatsy themselves for Peter Volandis? I don't think they're actually ghost- goat seeing themselves for Vlandis. What they're doing is it's the whole carrot and the stick thing. Yes. He's doing the thing that suits their agenda at the moment. So, of course, they're going to pump that up with positive That's press. It. And anyone who is a detractor or an opponent to what he's doing at the moment, they're of, they're the new enemy. At the moment, what he's doing yeah. is kind of like what they want him to do. So, of course, he's going to be you know rewarded with you know good That's copy. It. That's all. That's, that's all it is. It's this stupid fucking game of fucking- I don't yeah. know, something that rhymes with thrones that means fucking cockheads. And, um, yeah. and yeah, that's just the way it is at the moment, unfortunately. That's it. For episode 351, thanks for listening. As always, we're on Twitter at TWI League, Facebook.com forward slash This Week in League, and the group is uh, hashtag Twill Nation, and it resides at Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Twill Nation. Uh, what else? Uh, make sure you hit the like button, share the shit around where you can. Uh, when we when we share a post, uh, you know, online or in the groups, make sure you hit us back with your comments about the episode and um, have your say. And uh, if you'd like to have more of a say, and in fact, uh, indulge in a, an additional episode a week, you can join us as a digital member for just three ninety nine a month, and uh, you can grab that from the website anytime. Uh, very happy with the uptake of that at the moment, and uh, basically. 
among other things, once football starts, uh, there's going to be some more shit coming. But uh, even at the moment, we've been doing uh, an extra episode every single week that usually goes online slightly before the uh, the main episode. And uh, that one is a member so uh, member so <laughs> episode just for the members. There you go. You've just so, named it. I've just named it. It's the member side. Um, and yeah, where you guys ask questions, comments, whatever, it gets fucking loose at times. It, it's so. an ask me anything every week. So exactly, the content is controlled. By the members and not restricted. In fact, it's probably you know it's probably even encouraged to be outside of matters regarding rugby league because be we cover the rugby league stuff. Yeah, we we, cause we cover the rugby league stuff on the show pretty comprehensively mm. on this show. And so the other one is you know it's probably it's not a bad spot to uh, chat about some other things. Mm. Um, while we're talking about memberships, we um, got all the memberships out. Uh, I. I th- I think I said in the last episode, I wanted to have them all out by uh, last Friday. I think I got them out by last Thursday was the last of them. And then um, once that was all sorted, then I had a picture of, you know, where you had about another 10, I think, that were left over. Just sort of like some a buffer that I'd grab just in case, you know, there was damaged stuff in transit and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. uh, put them up. They pretty much sold out straight away as well. Um, so, had uh, three members come to me privately or on the group and say, look, I have been blessed enough to be, you know, continually employed throughout the Rona. And so I would like to, you know, sponsor a membership for someone. Now, that's not possible um, in that way because we don't have the membership. We don't have the, the stuff like the swag to create more memberships to, to do that, to give three away. However, um, I've spoken to the three guys in question and they're happy if we were to do, to, to sponsor like 10 Trust the shirts to go to worthy people. Mm. So we'll cover the shipping and stuff. These guys are going to cover the shirts. So ten. I don't know now. The, the thing is, is how how do we decide the recipients? That's the question. Nudes. Okay, what's your email address again? <laughs> I don't want no fucking nudes. <laughs> no, but if you if you if you've been doing it nudes tough, of their sisters, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus on on air. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, <laughs> no, thank you. Um, um if you've been oh. doing it tough, wanted to buy a membership but couldn't, you know, because. Yeah, you've been furloughed or, you know, Rona's fucked you up or you nearly died from Rona or whatever. Yeah. You know, or you, you know, putting all your energy into not choking bitches that did you wrong. Yeah, that Um, too. Hit us up. Hit us up if you know someone within the nation. Yep. Um, We'll keep it anonymous who nominated them. Yep. And if you, and and basically- or we're going to need to, yeah. And then I guess, uh, yeah, we'll keep it anonymous to who, who's or nominated them or whatever. if and somebody, then- you know, gets a hashtag Yuri of Cleary tattooed on their body somewhere, that automatically qualify for one. Forward. No. Don't Forward. Be, no. Don't be a dickhead. Anywhere on the body. Why would you be a dickhead if you, get to, if you, if you love it so much? Why wouldn't it be, uh, I mean, you know, they can still get employed at JB's. Look, JB's I, aren't closed down from runners. I like butterflies, <laughs> but if you have a face tattoo of a butterfly on one, it's hard to get a job. Doesn't mean butterflies are shit. <laughs> okay, neck. Fuck, o- fuck off with your insect hating agenda. <laughs> um, basically, long story short, we need your nominees or you know self nominate. Yep, we're going to give away ten. Um, sizing is going to be uh, we'll, we'll blow it wide open to you know some of the larger sizes it'll be a different brand shirt to the 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 main one that we love for the the regular sizes got the 3x however everyone's eligible and people who spend a lot of time in the group because i spend a lot of time in the group but also fucking for different you know different reasons and stuff as well so i don't necessarily take everything in if you've seen i mean we've had threads where we've talked about this sort of shit before yep so if anyone wants to take it upon themselves to actually, you know, go back through and pass and, and you know, some potential contenders out, then um, by all means do it. We got, we've got 10 we need to fill. Uh, I don't really have a time. There's no real time frame on doing it, yeah, but, you know, let's it. get it done, you know, as soon as we can though, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, the reviews for the Trustless shirt have been amazing. So you're going to, you know, 
Fucking people, people are gonna us. people are gonna fucking want it. You're fucking disappointed though by a couple of people that didn't trust us. Yeah, you know, yeah, who you are. yeah, yeah. No, I, I I would agree, but um, that's it. So thank you very much to the generous people. Um, I'm not sure if they want to remain anonymous, but a couple of them have have asked to be anonymous. Um, you know, I may still ignore that and say you fucking good cunts. Um, but thank you for your, your very generous gesture and we're going to try and get some stuff into the hands of people who richly deserve it and uh, we need you guys to help us find those qualified people to uh, receive them. That's it. And that's it. That's it for 351. Throw us a review on iTunes. Share shit around. And, uh, you know, tweet Spotify and tell them that um, we would love a 100 100- million dollar deal to <laughs> house our content oh, on there the, exclusively. I'll tell you what, the fucking story <laughs> times you guys would get if we signed a $100 million Spotify deal. Well, I mean, a $100 million Spotify deal would mean that it'd be like members episode, not what your question is this week. It would be, what do you want story time to be about this week? Oh, you want stepdad to fuck a Jeffrey? Done. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that cutscene in Snatch with the suitcase shutting. <laughs> boom. Go to the checkout. <laughs> Airplane seatbelt click. <laughs> no, instead of the seatbelt click, it's me just putting the GoPro on my forehead, <laughs> looking down. Anything to declare? So much. <laughs> so much. Stroke the furry wall. <laughs>